Hello and welcome, it's Deborah from Attic Lane and today I want to show you how to make a card with candles that light up. For this card I'm going to show you a couple of different techniques and we're going to start with quite an old die. This is to cut out some leaves. Uh, it's a Sizzix Tattered Leaves die. I will provide links to all of the items that I use to make this card in the video below. Having cut out my flowers, I'm going to run them through an embossing folder. Now, this is an old Cuttlebug embossing folder, and all that really matters is that you have a tight texture, nothing that's too loose. You want to make sure that those leaves have got as much texture on them as possible. I'm going to run the leaves through my Big Shot, and then I'm going to put them to one side while I focus on preparing the frame. So, I have a wood effect background stamp and I'm going to ink this up using my Versamark ink pad and I'm using my stamp positioning tool to help me with this because it's quite a large stamp. So I'll ink it up and stamp it a couple of times and when I'm happy with the ink saturation I will cover it with embossing powder. I'm using a Ulta New rose gold embossing powder and I will provide links to that and all the other items that I use in this video below. You can see the beautiful wood effect coming out as soon as I put that embossing powder on it. I moved on to a brown board. I use this to protect my work surface when I'm doing any heat embossing. It's just a, a plain regular art board that normally you would attach watercolour paper to. I want to show you, as best I can, the effect that you get when you heat emboss. This was what really got me into card making. When I first saw this effect I thought it was absolutely magical and not often are you able to really share that effect on camera but with the gold you can. I've cut a rectangular hole in the centre of my embossed black paper and I've created a frame. I'm going to save the uh, inside of that because it's so pretty I may want to use it later. I have a top folding black card that I've already prepared and this fits my frame perfectly. I'm taking a Cardio Cards stamp set, and I will provide a link below this video. I'm going to ink it up using Versamark ink and I'm going to stamp three candle images, one in the centre and one either side of the candle. You can see I've used some blue post-it note paper to hold everything down as I stamp onto my black background. I've used the frame to help me position the candles there. Again, I'm using my Ulta New Rose Gold Embossing Powder. This is a lovely fine delicate powder, it gives the most beautiful effect. And I've heat set my candles and now I'm adding the little flames that are part of this stamp set to the top and I will heat emboss those as well. I have some parchment paper and I've cut this so that it will fit behind just the tops of my candles, just behind the flames. I'm going to use my cutting board and my scalpel to cut out those flames just on the inside of the gold line. I want to try and keep the gold line as a, an outside line if I possibly can. Now that they're all cut out, I'm going to take my parchment paper and <laughs> this is, <laughs> I did make this card up a little bit as I was going along. Uh, I've stuck my parchment paper there, but really what I should have done is marked through the holes on the parchment where the candlelight flames were going to sit. However, I've moved on and I have glued the reverse of my frame and I'm putting that right on top of the black card. This is craft foam, it's available in black as well as in white and I'm going to use it as the backing for my frame. This card needs a lot of dimension as it turns out, it needs three of these layers of black card um, to create depth. And this is where you can see I shouldn't have added my parchment card because I need to go straight through um, my flames onto my black craft foam. Stay with me, it will make sense. What I need is depth and I need to get the little lights of the candles that will, that will power the candles, that will make them uh, look like they're lit. I need to give them a space to go. And so that's why I need depth on the craft foam. I'm using bright lights. These are available through Create and Craft. I will try and find them elsewhere online and see if I can provide you with a link. This little battery pack isn't very deep. It's maybe about three or four millimeters uh, deep. And 
I'm marking around it so that I know where I need to cut more dimension from my craft foam in order to hide that little battery pack. The card is actually quite clever the way that it works because it allows you to turn on a little switch on the battery pack so you can power the lights but it's completely hidden in the front frame of the card and when it's all put together you won't see this. So I'm layering up my craft foam and I think there were three layers that I needed in order to hide this little battery pack. I'm trying to show you these lights uh, turned on. It's very difficult to show you this because I, I like bright lights so you can see what I'm doing, but obviously that doesn't then allow you to see lit candles. These are great because they're on wire that you can move around and you can position the little lights exactly where you want them. I've popped uh, three in the centre flame and one in each of the side flames. This is double-sided tape. The reason that I'm using this here is because it serves a dual purpose. It will hold down the wire of the lights and it also provides additional adhesive when I attach the next layer, although I have boosted that with some fluid. That's the second layer of craft foam added and this is the final layer of craft foam. Three layers are what you need to contain that battery. And now the whole thing is being glued and added onto the black top folding card. Now that that's in position, you can see just how neat it is. I hope I've explained that clearly and you can see what it looks like when the candles are lit. It's really quite pretty. So now we have to create a base for those candles to sit in. And I'm using a Pebio wax. This is a gold wax. It's, it's lovely to use. A little bit goes a long, long way. And now you can see why we wanted all of that texture on the leaves, because the wax really brings out and highlights all of the lovely shapes. I'm going to do this to uh, three or four of my leaves. I don't need all of the ones that I cut out. I always like to have extra so that I have a few options. And now I'm just very carefully curling it just around my fingers, just to give each of the leaves a little bit of dimension. I'll cut off the stems that I don't need and now I can play around positioning these and putting them exactly where I want them. I'm not going to glue the leaves flat on there, I want that dimension, so I'm only going to glue where the leaf touches the frame. I'm going to make a central bow to complete the card at the bottom. I thought it looked a little bit bare, I thought it needed something else. I have some twine which I've rolled around a card a few times and I'm simply going to tie a knot in the middle and that will give me a lovely bow. And then I can use my glue and I can stick it right in the centre at the bottom of my leaves. It was a week before Christmas and all round the attic not a creature was stirring except a craft addict. I'm going to say thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Mm -hmm.